What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be building a custom center console for my Toyota pickup. So this is something that I've been meaning to do for quite a while now. However, it definitely moved up on my priority list once I installed this vinyl floor and I was left with this huge gaping hole. Now, part of that's my fault, but there would be a hole here anyway if I had carpet, and there was, because it was a truck that had a center console. It, it came with the bucket seats, never had a bench, so the carpet did have a hole from the factory anyway. So with the missing center console, you know, it's just kind of ugly. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some cardboard and make some templates that cover this entire area back to the dual cases and see if I can make something cool out of 22 gauge sheet metal. You may be wondering why I'm choosing to make a center console from scratch instead of just buying the factory shift bezel and console. Well, it's for two reasons. Number one is I wanna get better at fabrication. Admittedly, I'm just not very good at making things from nothing without any direction. And number two, the shift bezel and console cost over $300 used, and to me, that's just not worth it. In fact, my truck had the dual stack center console since it is an SR5 model, but once I installed the dual cases, I couldn't use it anymore without cutting it. Since those center consoles are worth about $300, I just sold it on eBay and used the money for my build and helped someone else restore their old Toyota. So the way that I'm kind of seeing it in my mind is that I want to cut holes in the metal so that the individual shifter boots can ride in those holes. But if it doesn't work out, I'll just use the factory shift boot. All right, so I got the overall shape cut out and the shifter holes cut into the template here. Just had to take a bunch of measurements, as you see, just finding the center and how long I want it to be, how wide I want it to be, everything like that. If there's any tapering that I plan to do to make it match the tunnel a little bit better, I'll probably just do that once I transfer this over to the sheet metal. Now, this is the second template that I made. The first one that I made looked like this, and it had a lot of guesswork in it, but it kind of put me on the right track to get a more accurate template made. So I'll probably do something similar to this one, and then, you know, copy over to this cardboard over here and then copy this over to the sheet metal and then start getting it installed in the truck. All right, so here's the finished template. Now, this isn't the final design. This isn't the end all be all. This is just a general idea to get us started with the sheet metal. So we might make changes as we see fit going through this project, uh, but this is just the general idea. So these two slots that you see here for the dual cases, those aren't permanent, that's just in there so I don't have to take a million measurements, it's easier to fit the template, and then I can just figure out where these are most optimally placed, I guess, and then make the cuts where it needs to be. Another thing is that the actual transmission tunnel in the cab is at a slight angle like this. So those little rubber grommets that uh, the shift boot has that fit into these holes that I cut, one of them is gonna have to sit higher and one will have to sit lower. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you'll see what I'm saying in a bit. But basically we need to get this to match the right angle in the cab. So yeah, I guess we'll just transfer this over to the sheet metal and get to cutting. So when I was cutting this thing out, I kind of messed up on this edge here. So we're just gonna put that edge towards the back so we'll never see it. And I cut this thing out to be 11 inches wide because the template is eight inches wide and I wanted to leave one and a half inches on each side to kind of fold over to, to like form to that transmission tunnel. So this should fit perfectly in between both of the lines I have marked here. I don't know if you can see them, but put it right in the center. And we have one and a half inches of uh, working space on each side. So now I'm just going to tape this template on here, start tracing some of these details and then cutting them out with a Dremel. I'm using a Dremel because it's just what I have. If I had something better, I would have used it.
I got the shifter holes cut out. You can see I have the shifter and the transfer case here. The transfer case cut has been cleaned up with the grinding bit on the Dremel. I'm just using one of these guys here. Um, on the shifter, I haven't done that yet. I just wanted to show you guys the difference between the two. I mean, it doesn't look like there's much difference on camera, I guess, but you can see that's deburred and it's not sharp or anything, and this one's all jagged. And I purposely cut inside the line so that I didn't make too big of a hole. In fact, both of these holes are too small as it is, and I did that on purpose because I can't add material, but I can remove material. So I purposely cut them too small just in case I need to enlarge them. So I'm gonna clean up that shifter hole, and then I'm gonna put the bends into this, uh, and we'll see how that goes, because I don't have a sheet metal bender. So I'm gonna try to do it with a vise and some two by fours. So I'm just gonna put them into the vise over there, clamp it on the area that I wanna bend, and then just kind of force it like that, and hopefully that'll give me a nice clean bend. My friend mentioned that I did this the hard way. I could have just built a frame out of flat bar and then welded sheet to the top of it. That would have made it so I didn't have to bend the sheet metal. I'm pretty good at making easy things complicated. All right, so this is where I'm currently at. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I was able to get some pretty decent bends with just using a vise and a two by four. Um, you might have noticed that I did neck it down right here by one inch next to the dual cases. And the reason I did that is because I just think it looks cool. Like I said before, the, the cardboard template was just a template. Doesn't mean I have to stay true to it the entire time. And when I was looking at this thing before I put in the bends, I thought it would look really cool if I just necked it down in this area here and made it a different shape other than just a rectangle down the entire transmission tunnel. So I did mess up a little bit right here on my math and you know I won't do it on the other side. So to fill that in, all I have to do is just weld it or uh, get some body filler or something and I should be able to make that look really nice. Not a big deal. So unfortunately, I can't finish this tonight. I'm gonna have to come back to it tomorrow because it is late in the evening and I don't wanna be that neighbor that's running a grinder at 10 p.m. So we back at it bright and early tomorrow and finish this thing up, figure out how to mount it in the truck. All right, it's the next day and I was looking at this thing. I'm not sure if there's a way I can do this any better. If you take a look at the other side, I basically have to cut out this triangle here in order to fold it the same way. So what I was thinking was that I was just gonna cut this a little bit longer in order to fill up that void. But if I were to cut this longer, it would make this area shorter. So either way, I don't, I don't think there's enough material to just perfectly fill in that void. If you guys know of a better way to do this and I'm just doing it wrong, you know, please let me know. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna figure out how to fill that with weld or body filler or something. Also, how come no one told me yesterday that I was just grinding next to lighter fluid? Here's a general idea of how it's going to look, but there's a couple of things that I want to address. As I mentioned earlier in the video, if I can't get the shifters to function properly, and what I mean by that is if I can't shift them into every gear or into high range or low range or whatnot without moving all of the sheet metal around because there's not enough clearance, then I'm just gonna install the factory shift boot. And the factory shift boot basically sits in this gigantic rectangle and there's a lot of clearance. Now this one's off a of Forerunner, so it's a little bit different, but you can see I have a lot of room to cut out a rectangle to mount that factory shift boot. So no issues there. The second thing is that the transfer case shifters and the dual cases are really hard to fit because they have a lot of movement. You have your high range, your neutral, your lower range, and you can see it shifted everything forward there because there's not enough clearance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna notch these out a little bit more on the front here, just like I did on the rear, and I'm gonna put like a rubber liner in that area to make it look nice and clean. There needs to be a lot of clearance in that area to not you know, tweak everything as you shift it into gear. But for now, I'm gonna take this over to my buddy's house and get these areas welded up that I notched. Hey, can you help me weld something? Yeah. It's just some like small 22 gauge sheet metal. It's probably gonna be kind of hard because it'll wanna burn through, but I made most of that shifter bezel and I was just wondering if you could help me out. Yeah, are you gonna come over? Yeah, I'm done. All right. 
All right, I'll be over there in like, I don't know, 30 minutes. Okay. All right, later. So what we plan to do is get this little patch piece and put it behind the area just to double up the thickness of the sheet metal and then weld that thing in and then I'll fill it out with body filler or something to make it smoother. Alright guys, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. In the next couple episodes, I'm going to be working on mounting it, upholstering it, and figuring out if I want to retain that factory shift boot or not. So stay tuned and make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later. Yeah.